var så. Det er spleist af Mufen. Og det var det, der var det, der var det, der var det, der det, der var det, der var det, det, der var det, der var det, der det, der var det, der det, der var 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 det, Review both movies he likes and movies he hates. He doesn't do the latter much anymore. Now don't get me wrong, he still criticizes movies. That is still a thing with his reviews. And he originally stopped with his style, he stopped doing that. But now he does criticize movies even if he likes them. But yeah, back when he made that review, he reviewed both movies he likes and movies he hates. Now, to be fair on his part, it's totally understandable why he doesn't review movies he hates anymore. He's a movie maker himself, and he wants to set a good example so he can be more accepted in the industry. I mean, that's fine and all, though I will admit I do miss what he used to bash on movies he hates. But at the same time, I'm completely fine with he doesn't return to that. I don't think he's gonna remove his old negative reviews anytime soon and because they will likely always be there there will always be some of these reviews that can't do a video thoughts episode on anyway to the topic of this specific video here's a fun fact i was actually gonna do a video thoughts episode on this a lot earlier in fact originally it wasn't even gonna be a halloween themed project originally i was gonna do a video thoughts episode on it before halloween but i kept delaying it and delaying it i think the main reason why i did is because I had far too many videos planned at a time, and I knew I had to slow down. Yeah, that is also the reason why many of the projects I was gonna make never have the light of day. And most of these are projects which I have just cancelled altogether so it's not worth it. So anyway, in this review, Chris Stockman is reviewing Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1978, which is one of my personal favorite horror movies. How could this is review? Well, only one way to find out, so without further ado, let's dive in. Normally when I comment on intros, I just say it's fucking awesome and leave it at that. But I will try to go into a bit more detail this time. What I find very interesting is that at the beginning of the intro there are VHS tapes, which you don't see much of in videos such the majority of people who care about physical media care more about DVDs than VHS. And that fucking spider web or whatever the hell it is around the VHS tapes are very fucking spooky. And you know, I really like that. The best part is the end of the fucking intro with those pumpkin hats. Now that sure gets me to the fucking Halloween spirit. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the 1974 film directed by Toby Hooper that started a franchise that was at one point in time very controversial, that was banned in some countries, despite not actually being very violent. Aren't these the same countries that ban movies for the most ridiculous reasons ever? You're referring to countries like Russia and China, right? Though to be fair, in this movie's case, there is actually a legit reason to ban it. But most of the movies banned in countries like that are banned for pretty fucking stupid reasons. And honestly, that's what I fucking hate about these countries. The gore in the film is surprisingly minimal, despite its reputation. If you've never seen this film, you probably think it's a very violent movie where a bunch of people are cut up with a chainsaw, but that really doesn't happen all that much. Correct me if I'm wrong, but does this movie have bad reputation because of how fucking disturbing it is? I don't think it has a reputation for the gore. Now this is of course an assumption on my part, and honestly I could be wrong. You're far more of a movie expert than I am, so I trust your words over mine. In fact, Toby Hooper actually wanted to go for a PG rating. He was really hoping he could get that PG. No matter what he did, all the cuts he attempted, it always got an R. And since the violence in the movie is mostly suggested and not usually seen in grotesque up-close detail, the fact that it got that R rating back in the 70s is entirely because it's really fucking terrifying. Mate, fucking really? He wanted a PG rating? Why though? There's nothing about that makes it child friendly. Then again, there are many PG and G rated movies that aren't child friendly at all. But yeah, I know this movie was made before the PG-13 rating existed. And to be fair, I don't think it 
would have gotten any other rating than R, even if it was released today. I mean, the standards of what makes an R-rated movie are different now. You can't get away with more nowadays with PG-13 rating than it could have back in the 1970s. But yeah, it's safe to say it would have gotten an R rating, even if it was made today. The film had an opening crawl that attempted to make us think this was based off a true story when it really isn't. It was sort of inspired in a way by a serial killer, but in no way is this film based on true events. And that got me fooled for a very fucking long time. In fact, I didn't even realize it wasn't based on a true story until we pointed that out in this video. Yeah, I thought for that long of a time that it legit was. The first time I saw this film, I actually hated it. I didn't get it. I just wasn't really ready for it yet. I mean, what is there to get ready for? It's not a complex view or anything, it's actually very easy to understand. Yeah, I know this is a major nitpick, and in the long run, there isn't anything actually wrong with what Chris Stockman says here, but I still find the word in here a bit odd. I, uh, I was expecting something more along the lines of a Friday the 13th or a Halloween, a film that is very violent and a lot of people die, but it's kind of fun. Alright, I will give you that. Friday the 13th matches that description. But Halloween? I mean, if you were talking about the sequels, you would be right. But the original 1978 Halloween movie isn't that gory. In fact, most of the kills in that movie happen off screen. And it's not really a fun movie either. It's a legit scary movie. I assume that's the one you were referring to, but I'm sorry, I don't think it's a good example if that's the case. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre cannot really be described as fun. This movie is very unsettling, and it wants to gross you out in almost every scene. I mean, can any horror movie, which is good, as you be considered fun? I don't think so. We watch horror movies to be scared out of our minds. We do not watch them to have fun. This is one of the few films that I can't eat while watching. I will watch the nastiest, most disgusting things in a movie and be eating popcorn or a sandwich or something. Can't do it with this film. Alright, fair enough, but that's not the case with me. No movie period has that effect on me. Because I know that movies are, by the end of the day, just fiction. So, why would I care about any of that stuff? And I remember after the first time I saw it, I was like, alright, I guess it's just one of those movies I don't get. Okay, it happens. Sometimes you watch a film that everyone says is great, and it's just not for you. That is definitely the case for me when it comes to Avengers Endgame. Ever since it was released, I tried my damn hardest to love it as much as so many people do. And no matter how hard I try, I just fucking can't because the problems I have with the movie are problems that I just can't ignore. Then, for some reason, I just kept wanting to watch the movie again. And again. And eventually, I have really come to respect this movie. This is a similar case to me when it comes to Wally. I hated it for fucking years. But just now, this year, I started fucking loving it. It's interesting how things change with time. So much of it has to do with the fact that it is super low budget. They did not have a lot of money at their disposal, and so they reused a lot of clothing. Characters wore the same things over and over again. They filmed this over a horrific heat wave in Texas. The actors who partook in the climactic dinner scene were losing their minds. Everyone wanted to kill each other. They were stuck in this house with this rotting food under these hot lights, wearing the same clothes day in and day out with this insane heat wave. And you can feel every bit of that on the screen. This movie truly is very horrifying. My god, that's fucking terrible. Though to be fair, I know. Bad experiences are common when it comes to filmmaking. That does suck, but that's just the way it is. Also, I don't agree with you that the movie being low budget is one of the reasons why it's fucking awesome. I mean, sure, a low budget movie and using the few resources people have is admirable for sure. And I know it's harder to make a great movie without a large budget. It especially was hard then since there was no internet. But I honestly don't think a movie's budget makes the movie any better or worse. The characters in the film though, I will say, are really bad. The characters suck. The people in the movie are just objects. This is the main reason why I wanted to comment it on this video in the first place. Chris Duckman, I respectfully disagree with you. I think the characters in this movie are fucking great. I mean, I will give you they're nothing particularly memorable, but for the purpose of this movie, they actually fucking work. 
The only reason I know any of their names is because for a large portion of the movie, they shout each other's names into the woods when their friends go missing. I mean, true, but you don't really need to know a character's name to know what their personalities are. I can tell you something about the characters right now. One of them is a guy who talks a lot of nonsense and doesn't care if he offends others. One is very sensitive, and granted, they are dysfunctional people, but I still see them as regular human beings though. That is the main reason I fucking like these characters and related to them. This film is nothing but an exercise in tension. Grotesque, looming, filthy tension, and on that account, the film works extremely well. Yep, and it's a movie that did it all well, unlike the Sam movies. When characters die in this film, it doesn't have that, oh, they're just actors sensibility to it. Hold on, didn't you say earlier on in the video that you think they are terrible characters? And now you're saying that you actually care when they die. I don't know about you, but me personally, I have to actually fucking care about the bad characters of a horror movie in order for it to be scary when something bad happens to them. That is probably just me though. But I wanna ask, if you think those are bad characters, why exactly do you care? If they die, I don't get it. Some people call this documentary style, but there's a lot of great dolly shots and movement that, you know, that they're not in documentary, so I don't really go for that, but it definitely looks like he's documenting things that are happening. I mean, I don't see how it's like a documentary at all. Don't documentaries usually have a narrator? I mean, I don't watch many documentaries myself, so I really wouldn't be the one to judge, but it didn't feel like one to me personally. And it's funny because none of the sequels that had more money were ever able to replicate the success of this film because this film's success is so wrapped up in the fact that they didn't have any money. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree. Out of all the sequels to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the only one I saw was the second one. And even though I think it's a good movie, it's never near the quality of this masterpiece. Texas Chainsaw Massacre achieved something in horror that very few films did, and I'm gonna give it an A minus. You know, a baseball Chris Tuckman used to give ratings like that. I totally understand why he does it anymore because the reasons that I stated earlier. But to be fair to him, he doesn't really need to give ratings in order for it to be a review. A movie review is just an analyst of the movie. As long as you give good reasons as to why you like or hate a movie, that's all what really bears. A review can't be a review and even a good one even without ratings. If this film had more money and it was a bigger studio film, I would probably be harder on it. But I understand that what they were going for was just an exercise in tension. Yeah, that certainly has changed now. Chris Duckman has become much more soft on mainstream movies. That's why he rarely reviews mainstream movies which he hates anymore. And when he does criticize movies, he's very soft on his criticisms too. And honestly, I respect that about Chris Duckman. Although I don't think his more recent reviews are bad in that way, it's still admirable, especially now on YouTube science. Negative reviews are far too common. It's good to see someone optimistic who makes positive reviews very often. Now it's time for my overall thoughts. Honestly, this is a solid review, so way to go, Chris Duckman. I mean, there is one point which I strongly disagreed with, but I would call the point bad. I don't think a point is bad simply because I disagree with it. That would be very narrow-minded. He certainly is a love to have the opinion that the characters are poorly written, and I'm not taking that away. I just disagree with that opinion, that's all. It's hard to say whether or not this is one of his best reviews as he made so fucking many good ones over the years, but it's definitely a great review. As for my opinion on Texas Tears of Massacre, well, it's one of my favorite horror movies of all time. At the next year, in 2024, I will be doing a spoiler movie review on it, so look out for that. Well, guys, this is basically it. Thank you for watching, it was a fantastic day.